Welcome to the next installment of Law and Order, the video series where I look at and unpack stories from games. In this one we'll be looking at the story of Maid of Scare from Wales Interactive. This game was among the first that I played on my channel, but I found it more suspenseful than full on scary. Nonetheless, the setting in South Wales was amazing. Featuring heavily inspired Lovecraftian flavours along with Greek mythology, the story was heavily based off of a real Welsh folktale involving ghosts and a tragic love story. There'll be spoilers in this video, so if you're thinking of playing this game for yourself, you have been warned. But that's enough intro, let's get into the video. It's 1897, and a renowned musician named Thomas Evans is travelling on a train to Scare Island near Porthcawl in South Wales. He's received a letter from his lover, Elizabeth Williams, stating that their plans to run away together have been dashed, as Elizabeth's father has found out and is keeping her locked away in the hotel her family runs and owns, which is named Scare Hotel. She mentions that the situation is far worse now and that her father seeks to use her, as he did her mother, and that is for her to use her talents as a singer to draw wealthy folk to their land, however she doesn't elaborate on what this is for. Elizabeth refused to do so and that's why she's been imprisoned in the hotel. The letter also asks Thomas to compose a melody, a counter to a song contained in a locket which belonged to Elizabeth's mother. Elizabeth states that without this composition, all hope of holding back the darkness at the hotel will be lost. Something sinister is clearly happening at Scare Hotel. Thomas arrives at Scare Island train station and this place is quite run down and unkempt and there are abandoned suitcases strewn across the station. Thomas finds the front gates to the hotel locked but he must go round. He sees a bright white light from what seems to be some sort of spirit hovering over a lake which disappears along with a dog that runs off. Thomas eventually finds his way to the entrance of the hotel and hears someone singing from somewhere but Thomas enters the hotel. He walks into reception but there's no one there but again there's lots of mess and suitcases everywhere. He hears the phone in the reception area ringing and it's Elizabeth. She tells him that the hotel is no longer safe but she's trapped in the hotel's attic and hiding from the others. The others being her father and uncle along with the staff. She says that they have all become lured by the darkness inside the hotel and lost their minds. They now stalk the halls attacking anyone who make a noise. She instructs Thomas to find four brass cylinders, musical cylinders which emit a melody designed to keep everyone enticed by the darkness under its influence. The main hall features a grand harmonium and if the four cylinders are placed inside the harmonium and all four melodies are played at once, then the darkness will be defeated and the madness will end. Elizabeth tasks Thomas with finding all four of them and to bring them to her. Thomas eventually, whilst exploring the hallways of the hotel, hears a man pleading for help from behind a door. Thomas tries to help the man by trying to break the door down but it's no use. Big pounding footsteps come from behind the door and it seems the man has been attacked. Thomas carries on into the chapel and sees the same spirit that he saw at the lake earlier. He finds the first of four cylinders. This one features a picture of Cerberus. Thomas spots a trail of blood leading to the elevator and after restoring power, he descends to the basement and sees a massive man smashing a person through a window and carrying him away. Thomas continues to follow the path through the basement and meets one of the staff. They wear masks over their faces so are pretty much blind and they call themselves the Quiet Ones. Thomas escapes and ends up outside in the grounds of the hotel and comes across a graveyard. One particular grave reads Prudence Williams, Elizabeth's mother. At this moment Thomas is interrupted by a man with a cane who after spotting Thomas gives chase but Thomas falls through a grave into some tunnels below and he again sees the bright light of the spirit. After some sneaking Thomas finds a way up from the mine back to the surface and exits a church but he stumbles upon some sort of ritual taking place featuring the man from earlier. The man with the cane appears to pour something on the man's face but his viewing experience is interrupted and Thomas after seeing the dog again retreats through a door into a garden maze area. This maze has patrolling quiet ones and leads to a phone where Thomas speaks to Elizabeth again who says that Thomas has to evade capture otherwise they'll subject him to the ritual he just witnessed. Elizabeth said that the dog Thomas keeps seeing is her late mother's dog Calliope. Elizabeth is relieved that the dog is alive because her uncle Abraham, the big guy Thomas had been encountering, hated the dog and Elizabeth feared that he'd disposed of her. Anyway, Thomas goes to the nearby scare point and he sees Calliope caught up in a bear trap and Thomas frees her completely optional but come on. 
He finds the second of the four cylinders up on Scare Point, and this one features a hero. Thomas's travels take him to a laboratory of some sort, and he finds a contraption called a phonic modulator, which by the designs indicate that it can be used as a weapon against the Quiet Ones by emitting a high-pitched frequency which stuns them. After trying it out, Thomas makes his way through the hotel grounds and re-enters the hotel. Entering a storeroom for the hotel bar, Thomas speaks to Elizabeth on the phone again, and she says that she does not know where the remaining two cylinders are, but are probably on the first and second floors. After some stellar investigatory work, Thomas unlocks a hidden ladder which leads to the first floor. Elizabeth warns Thomas that the first floor is rigged with various traps, so he must be careful. Thomas needs to find four segments of the family crest, so he can unlock access to the elevator which will take him to the second floor. Thomas, during his stay on the second floor, evades all manner of traps, trapdoors and hazards, and finds the four crests, unlocking the elevator, and he rides it to the second floor. Elizabeth calls Thomas again and says that this floor is patrolled by her uncle Abraham, but that if he can evade him, the entrance to the attic is in the west wing. Thomas spots a key, but Abraham smashes his arm through the wall and grabs the key. Abraham eventually surprises Thomas again and smashes through an entire wall this time, and chases Thomas, but Thomas finds a contraption which stuns Abraham, knocking him out, and Thomas takes the key from him. He finds a third cylinder in Elizabeth's father's room, this one featuring the siren on it. He gains access to the attic and he sees a figure standing in the attic singing. It's definitely not Elizabeth, and Thomas turns around and is attacked by the man with the cane, revealed to be Elizabeth's father, Isaac Williams. Thomas is thrown down the garbage chute and he ends up in the basement again, but his phonic modulator is broken. He walks through a prison area and finds the fourth and final cylinder, this one featuring a picture of Medusa. Attempting to escape through the basement like before, Thomas is grabbed by Isaac and is prepared for a ritual. But before Isaac can complete it, Thomas is saved by Calliope, the dog, and escapes to an underground passage which leads back to the hotel once again, this time an area with a huge cage and a piano. Elizabeth's father Isaac is playing the piano, so Thomas must only move whilst he is playing, otherwise he will hear him. Thomas manages to open the door of the cage and insert the locket Elizabeth gave him and it knocks out Isaac. Thomas gets back to the main hall and meets with Elizabeth near the Grand Harmonium. She, rather suspiciously, is eager for him to hand over the four cylinders. Now here's where two different endings come into play. In the good ending, Thomas doesn't trust Elizabeth, so he uses four music sheets he found during his journey throughout Scare Hotel to play the counter song in its full glory. Elizabeth tries to stop him, but it's too late. The song has done its job. Uncle Abraham approaches, but the song floors him before he can grab Thomas. Elizabeth sings her counter song as they descend into the caves underneath the hotel, where a mythical creature known as the Siren sits, locked in a cage surrounded by quiet ones who are also affected by the counter song. Thomas frees the creature and him and Elizabeth watch it fly away, bringing an end to the darkness inside Scare Hotel. In the bad ending, Thomas entrusts Elizabeth with the cylinders and she places them into the Grand Harmonium. The siren song plays and Thomas can only watch as they kill the creature by burning it alive and stabbing it. Elizabeth is overcome by the darkness and gives off a sinister smile. Thomas becomes a quiet one and the game then ends. So an awesome story here which has a deep lore so let's jump in and look at the basis for this story. The marketing for this game as a game based off a folk tale featuring one of Wales's most haunted places brought some legal issues with it as the actual owners of Scare House near Porthcawl in Bridgend took issue with the game using the actual house's name, so the developers renamed it as Scare Hotel instead. But let's have a look into the real Scare House and discover some more about it. Scare House is an actual grade 1 listed manor house which was built upon the remains of a monastic grange which was itself originally built around 900 years ago. The grange was built to house the Cistercian Order, which was a religious order of monks and nuns who decided to break away and separate themselves from the Benedictines. But this manor house is home to its own tragic love story which would leave its mark for years to come. Now this is where the link to the game's story is established. In the 1700s, a man named Isaac Williams took possession of Scare House. His daughter Elizabeth Williams would become the legend of the Maid of Scare. Elizabeth fell in love with a young carpenter and a musician named, you guessed it, Thomas Evans. Due to Thomas not being very wealthy and having plans for his daughter to marry someone wealthy, Isaac imprisoned his daughter in the house until she married a wealthy man. Elizabeth and Thomas hatched a plan to run away and live their lives together. 
But Isaac had found a worthy suitor named Thomas Kirkhouse, and despite the reluctance of Elizabeth, the two married. These kind of marriages were the norm in Wales in the 18th century, being more like a business deal than a marriage, with both families benefiting from the union financially. Now Elizabeth, still being madly in love with Thomas Evans, loved him so much that the legend says that she died of a broken heart, and she died very young, in 1776. Other stories tell a tale of her simply starving herself to death. Either way, according to the legend, Elizabeth's spirit would remain at Scare House, and it's said that Elizabeth's ghost can often be seen at one of the upstairs windows of Scare House. Some say she is still there waiting to reunite with her love, Thomas Evans. The people who saw Elizabeth even gave birth to a rumour that Elizabeth wasn't actually dead, such were the frequency of the sightings. Thomas Evans would eventually write a folk song in honour of Elizabeth, titled E Ferch or Scare, which translates as The Girl from Scare, regularly performing the song until his own death in 1819. A book titled The Maid of Scare was written and published in 1872 by an author called R.D. Blackmore. This was a three-volume novel which didn't directly follow the love story of Elizabeth Williams and Thomas Evans, but instead focused on a fisherman from a town called Nottage, a small town not far from Scare House, and his discovery of a young girl washed upon the shore in a lifeboat. This novel did, however, at the time, make Scare House famous due to the renown of Blackmore as a novelist at that time. There is another ghost legend involving a ship's captain who died after his ship ran aground and crashed into the rocks at Scare Point. It's said that his spirit also resides in the area. But that's it for the real history side of the coin. But let's flip it now and look at the details of the game's story. Despite the story and the basis for Made of Scare being heavily inspired by the love story of Elizabeth and Thomas, some details differ, such as the rest of the family and the fact that there is some Greek mythology involved, as well as ships ending up shipwrecked on the rocks of Scare Point. In this story, the Scare Hotel was actually owned by Jebediah Williams. He had two sons, Isaac and Abraham. Isaac married a lady called Prudence at some point, and they had a daughter, Elizabeth. Prudence was a famed singing sensation, according to this poster, and Elizabeth was just as skilled. But the men were up to something, a little more criminal, smuggling and looting shipwrecks for their plunder. I mean, I say criminal, but this was actually considered legal practice back then. If a ship ran aground on someone's land, then that person had the right to loot the ship's cargo. People used to take advantage of this by lighting beacons to lure ships towards them and cause them to crash. Anyway, one evening on 3rd of February 1874, a huge ship called the HMS Providence ran aground just off of the coast east of Scare Point. Jebediah then ordered the beacons, which were lit, to be put out. The flames from the vessel were very high, and Jebediah also ordered his staff to extinguish the flames so that they could plunder the ship's remains. They did so, and the ship's remains were transferred to the cavern beneath Scare Point. Around a week later, still plundering the wreck, the men find something creature which is in awful shape, and the creature kept trying to sing. What's more is that the creature started to have an effect on Jebediah's men, or rather the creature's singing did. According to Isaac, Jebediah was concerned about this, and judging from Jebediah's journal, he was aware that its song was dangerous. But Isaac was fascinated. Isaac studied the creature and learned that the creature would sing its song to lure prey to it, so it could devour its prey and survive. A few days later, Jebediah came around and they started to work out how they could harness the creature's power. They attempted this by chaining it to Scare Point. They aimed to use the creature's song to lure ships to run aground, and this would increase their earnings from the plunder they took from the wrecks. The following year, in 1875, Jebediah became the leader of a cult called the Quiet Ones. Their goal was to revere in the power from the song of their source, to worship the creature, and in doing this, they would be able to fully control its power. A ritual for this cult would be carried out for new followers to receive the blessing, which would involve dousing the follower in something and setting them on fire, exposing the follower to the thrall or bondage of the song. They would then shield the follower from the song with a mask, which they called the garment of the quiet ones. The follower would then have become a devotee. The next phase of Isaac's plan would involve prudence. This letter by Jebediah to his cult members states that prudence has volunteered for the position of priestess in the cult, and from his journal, it says that Prudence can learn the song of the creature in order to control its power. At some point in time, Jebediah Williams, or Grandfather Williams as he's also known, passed away, leaving Isaac in charge of Scare Hotel. In line with the folk tale, Isaac ruled with an iron fist alongside his brother Abraham. But truth is, they were absolutely skint. 
They were desperate to restore Scare Hotel to its glory days, so they would devise schemes in order to try and make good money. Isaac and Abraham designed what they called murder rooms, and would kill their guests and feed them to the creature, in the hope that the creature would use their song as he wills it. Eventually, Isaac would use Prudence's skill as a singer to sing the creature's song, and they recorded the song. Over time, the hotel's popularity plummeted, and Abraham was still killing guests. Isaac reprimanded Abraham for it, as the low number of hotel guests meant more attention on the hotel, so he ordered him to stop. But then their plans took a hit in September 1894, when Prudence died at the age of 42. This forced the family to close the hotel. Abraham and Isaac tried to force Elizabeth to sing, to lure ships to the hotel and their droves, so that they could make money to reopen the hotel again. However, she refused to do so after finding her grandfather Jebediah's diaries, which detailed what her mother did for them. Isaac and Abraham were furious, and they believed that having control over the song would bring them a fortune by looting ships, and using that money they would restore the Scare Hotel to its former grandeur. Isaac discovered a way to transfer the recording of Prudence singing the song onto a brass cylinder. But they found the song was so potent as one piece of music played in the sequence that they split the song between four individual cylinders, with each one featuring a symbol of Greek mythology, and placed them at various locations in the area. They put them inside chairs as part of a test, and would play part of the song to a victim. Three years later, in 1897, the tests with the cylinder showed that the song increased suggestibility and compliance in victims after repeated sessions in the chair. Before Prudence died, she left Elizabeth a letter, telling her that if she gets the chance to leave Scare Hotel, she should take it. Prudence details her regret at not leaving, at getting seduced by the song, and for her part in Isaac and Jebediah's schemes. Elizabeth devised a plan to run away and be with Thomas, but her father Isaac caught wind of her plan and kept her there at the hotel. Aware of the song and its effects, and having refused to sing the song for her father and uncle, she needed a way to lift the darkness in the hotel and the madness that it had caused. To do this, she wrote lyrics for a counter song and contacted four of the country's best composers, instructing them to write a portion of a song to counter the song on each of the four cylinders. But a problem was brewing. Isaac had planned and advertised a grand reopening of the hotel, but would test the song at the rehearsal on the hotel staff. She says on this phonograph that on the 22nd of October, seven days before the reopening, two of the four composers had arrived at the hotel with their sheet music. Elizabeth agreed to sing the song at the rehearsal for her father, but only in an attempt to try and stop his vile plan. She would sing her counter song instead, but she says in one of her journal entries that this backfired. The counter song, which was unfinished due to Thomas not yet arriving with his music, combined with the song from the four cylinders in the grand harmonium sent everyone completely mad. The staff apparently started attacking one another and screaming, and her father started bleeding from his ears and started scribbling on the stairs using his own blood. Elizabeth's second diary entry tells us that after this happened, she escaped to the attic and barricaded the door. Elizabeth says that the creature must be released to prevent it from harming anyone else. Following day, according to her third diary entry, Elizabeth writes about attempting to go to the caverns underneath Scare Point to free the creature, but here's her uncle Abraham stomping around underneath her on the second floor. She mentions that guests had been arriving, but she was powerless to warn them. One of these guests was one of the composers, Henry Hughes. Considered to be one of the country's top composers, Henry was the man stood behind the door that was asking Thomas for help. The man carried off by Abraham, and the man subjected to the ritual that Thomas saw from the trees. He is also this guy. The other two composers, Matilda Norton, she was killed. I can't show her body because, you know, YouTube, a bunch of blood phobic flakes. And Arthur Morris, who was subjected to one of the four chairs. This leads to the point the game begins with Thomas on a train, having received Elizabeth's letter asking for help and her request for a piece of music. As we see at the end of the game, Elizabeth's intentions are questionable. And after choosing to trust Elizabeth, it's clear that she's been corrupted by the song, telling Thomas they can gain control of the song for themselves. It's clear from Elizabeth's diary that this is what happened. If Thomas plays the counter song, then Elizabeth snaps out of whatever trance she was under, and she sings the lyrics to the counter song. It's clear that Elizabeth had been seduced by the song the entire time that Thomas was in the hotel. This is because she told him she needed the four cylinders and mentioned nothing about the music sheets. She knew full well what would happen. So earlier I mentioned that Jebediah was concerned about the creature as detailed in his and Isaac's journals. This is because Jebediah had some idea of what the creature may have been. He believed that they had captured Pessino, 
a siren from Greek mythology. Jebedar states that Pessino is the daughter of Melpomene, who is one of the Nine Muses. According to the mythology, Pessino's father was Achilles, the river god. So let's do a quick dive into Greek mythology. The three sirens in Greek mythology were essentially recorded as early as the 8th century and were depicted as sea nymphs, whose main purpose was to use their siren song to lure sailors to their death. The myth says that they were originally handmaidens of the Greek goddess Persephone, and when Persephone was secretly abducted by Hades, Persephone's mother, an Olympic goddess named Demeter, gave the handmaidens the bodies of birds in order to help them assist in the search for Persephone. There's a whole deep story to this involving Zeus being a conspirator in the abduction, but I'm not going to go deep into that here. But anyway, the three sirens gave up on their search, eventually settled on the island of Anthemoessa. The sirens were involved in another Greek myth in which the Argonauts passed by the sirens with the help of a poet who drowned out their song, and another time Odysseus sailed past them, but his men blocked their ears with wax in order to drown out the song and they escaped. The legend says that if men escape, then the sirens are condemned to death. And the legend also says that the sirens were so distraught that they dove underwater and drowned themselves. However, quite how Pessino ended up being captured by the crew of the HMS Providence isn't clear. The siren in the game seems to sing the Welsh hymn Cad on Lan, which translates as a pure heart. But why was this creature's song a popular Welsh hymn? Maybe it was singing a song relevant to the people it was around. It tries this again at the end after being released, but it didn't work due to the counter song, so the creature flew off into the distance. In the bad ending, because they'd harnessed the power of the song and how to use it, they had no use for the creature, so they just killed it. The HMS Providence in this game was inspired by a real-life seven-ton steamship called the SS Sam Tampa, which ended up wrecked on Scare Point in the Bristol Channel in 1947. The shipwreck ended in tragedy as the incident resulted in 49 deaths, which consisted of 39 crew members and 8 of the volunteer crew of RNLB Edward, Prince of Wales, who were dispatched from the Mumbles lifeboat station in nearby Swansea. This happened a long time after Isaac Williams owned Scare House, but there's still some truth tied into the story in terms of the Williams family plundering shipwrecks. The real-life Isaac Williams, who was a respected local magistrate by trade, was considered by many to be guilty of plundering a French merchant ship called Le Vainqueur, which wrecked on Scare Point in December 1753. He claimed that he stored the ship's goods underneath Scare House for safekeeping. Now this wouldn't have been such a big deal because, as mentioned, back then plundering wasn't illegal in the 1700s, but it became a big deal. This was due to the diplomatic relations between Britain and France being at a very low point at this point in time, and the plundering of Le Vainqueur became an international incident. The incident and the accusations levelled at Isaac Williams ultimately ruined him and his career. But hey, that's it for this video. I hope that it gave you a better idea of the wider lore surrounding the story in this game. But if you enjoyed this one, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to support. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts, but for now, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.